Kevin Jones has joined us and he his his home was taken away by the Sawananoa River recently in Asheville, North Carolina. And I'm thrilled you're here and just want to hear what's up for you. Thank you. It was not easy to get here. Um, what do you say? You know, my, the river did go through our house for six hours. And so um, one thing that's done is that, you know, we can insurance will build it back, but it is no longer ever going to be a, a significant liquid asset because it's river has flown through it. So we have a, our decision to make it a retreat and Airbnb center is there. We're living in an Airbnb that didn't get water and went to the next to top step next to my daughter's little uh, kind of uh, DIY hippie semi anarchist village. <clears throat> We're, we've discovered, you know, things aren't working. Okay. So <clears throat> to flush, we are getting water from the Creek uh to uh, get drinking water there is a neighbor who has a solar uh generator with a well that's uh, filtered but we're boiling it so we solved that we no longer have to do bottled water we have propane we went uh, we, we drove uh, up to johnson city and spent two days getting like you know showers and they had lights that turned on and all that kind of thing it was really kind of amazing you could pay with a what's called a credit card Perfect. <laughs> and um and so we brought back a generator and so if we keep that um on uh and not really use it we can use the generator five hours a day we figured out a less noisy place to put the generator but, you know, in about seven hours and we're uh, the Teslas have been amazing because they can charge all these big flashlights and lamps and also iPads, phones and everything else. And everybody ran out of gas over the weekend, but we didn't. Uh, I'm, I just went to get my car charged for the first time since. Uh, I don't know, Tuesday. And uh, but whereas Rosalie's car is, yes, the Tesla's been yeah, the, the workhorse. It's bigger and as a bigger battery. Uh, I'm really involved in looking at uh, resilient infrastructure that works when this kind of thing happens repeatedly. I've got a fundraiser I sent to the list. We're trying to get a, a microgrid hub that would be electricity at a community center. Uh, Starlink is the only reliable internet. I, I They're around here, but the map was wrong. But but uh, T-Mobile got me online. I'm you know within... 30 yards from them. And uh, so charging becomes a huge thing. Uh, you know, everybody else, water is incredibly critical. Uh, it, what's been amazing is how well the government has been integrating their efforts from FEMA to the county to uh, the Department of Transportation. The, the city is a shit show, but they always have been. Uh, you know, they've had four DEI uh, leaders in three years. I mean, so, you know, we have our, our community equity fund that does uh, friends and family funding. And we work with the county. We just don't want to work with the city. And so they're being, you know, expectedly dysfunctional, uh, but better than normal. But uh, the FEMA app is incredibly easy. And I had a friend who got on FEMA with a phone and only took 20 minutes uh, you know, the National Guard was in town on Saturday. They came to our farm on Sunday. Wow. Uh, I haven't really gone and looked at the rest of the property. I just, it's just too sad. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, it, it, something came up. I was listening to 1A and they were really interviewing our local really good uh, Blue Ridge Public Radio reporters. What are you doing about wellness? And it's like, we're working 12 hour days and don't really have time. Uh, <clears throat> thank you for that question. But, you know, we are, we are, you know, uh, you know, the, uh, they've, they've gone to the affordable housing places and had uh, EMTs carry bottled water. And then now they're doing water distribution at the affordable housing places now. Uh, and then uh, the other things, uh, you know, the, the, FEMA is at the major distribution places to help people fill out uh, the, the forms to get. And people are getting, you know, my son managed our Airbnb and the glamping that's all gone. <clears throat> and he can get cash for um, lost uh, income. I mean, they're, they're, they're quick and easy to help us out. And I've never seen the government work this well together. It's, it's, uh, it's, 
I'm not a big government fan, but God damn, this is working well, you know, uh, and they're, they're listening really well. And they're, they're, you know, we're up to, I think, 64 deaths in our county, uh, but they're still looking for folks. And the Registrar of Deeds, a really clever guy, has put all the places uh, online and he's got a team of 800 volunteers going to knock on doors to see if people in this house uh, have been reached. And so, you know, then the, in Swan, we're in Swan and Oa, and I've sent this thing out. <clears throat> um, so there is a council of mayors that meets every week, and that's Black Mountain, Woodfin, Weaverville, and Asheville. We're in an unincorporated area. So when they decide on resources, we have no voice. <clears throat> and and the only, there is the, the pastor of the Baptist Church of every, all things is stepped up with meals every night and uh, a charging station. I'm trying to get him to be the microgrid hub for us and get a Starlink station there. I'm, I'm, I'm really planning for infrastructure that works when things don't work. People are trying to bring back infrastructure. I think we need to do things like this will happen again. What will happen when the power goes out? Microgrid hubs are really good. They're inverters, they're solar, they're, they're, you know, they, they, they can be a, a hub of, uh, Electricity, lights, and everything else, and charging, and then, uh, and then you, you, Starlink is the only thing that is reliable uh, anywhere. <clears throat> I, I can, I can send that. Uh, in fact, I, I'll send that link to to now, now that I'm online. I will send this GoFundMe. Oh, good, we're almost at. I'll see where we are when I, when I refresh this. Let me go to here. Where is chat? Chat's uh, chat is here. So you know. It, it, there are uh, also too many well-meaning people bringing in trucks. And I because I'm really public, I'm saying, look, contact our county commissioner. She's the only one that, re that represents the, the worst hit area, which is us. So I don't know. Uh, and there's a great Washington Post story on how bad it is here. And, you know, my the bridge I go over three times a, a day uh, is it, broken forever. And, and it's been on the national news everywhere I've been. Uh, up in Johnson City, it's it's a great picture of total destruction, <clears throat> and uh, so you know the churches are filling in when the public sector doesn't. You know, I've been texting with a, a good uh, state legislator, and she finally she got Black Mountain, which lacks the political clout of the other three towns. She got them a water distribution center. But, you know, churches are everywhere coming in, but I'm trying to get people to connect with Terry Wells, who will take them to folks who know how to reach folks, rather than a truck by the side of the road and people have to find it. So it's, you know, I, I, one thing that's interesting is that one degree more of heat makes the water 7% more able to hold moisture. And then the other thing that is relevant is that uh, storms used to lose 75% of their power when they reach land. Now they only lose 50% of their power. Wow. We, and we, we've got a ham radio person in our little network. We've got crank up radios. Uh, the Tesla has a, a radio and you know, it's been, I've been using the battery since Thursday and just went to charge. But it's, it's, I think we have to plan for infrastructure not working. This is a part of managed retreat that John Warner and I have been uh, looking at from coastal areas. And now we have to think about, you know, managed retreat because the power won't, will, will break often. And we have to plan for that. Uh, you know, you have to know where your creek is to be able to flush. And then, uh, you know, we have, I got a power generator, but I think long term I have to look at a solar generator. We have a good well. And I haven't looked into that. We just needed one to get a refrigerator working because there are stores where you can buy food now. But, the, you know, the, the road that's the best road east is Highway 40. And uh, it's closed until September of next year through the mountains. Wow. Uh, and so there are, uh, you know, I-26 Southville, this is the first road uh, open. We found a way up I-26 North with a, a friend who knew where the back roads were that Google Maps wouldn't really show. And so, you know, people, are, there's lots of and, uh, mutual aid happening, but, you know, there, there are nonprofits that are trying to, and the, the coordination and the way FEMA is listening to nonprofits and the way Department of Transportation is listening to nonprofits we're really near Bee Tree Creek and, and the Bee Tree Dam. 
And uh, yesterday they uh, took an ATV uh, and then they still had to go uh, hike a mile and a half to the pumping station, the water treatment station. And uh, that, but that enabled them to take pictures to get the Department of Transportation in to figure out the road. And then suddenly like, you know, um, Corps of Engineers is there to help, um, you know, uh, get the road. Yeah, there's lots of uh, online resources for, uh, people to, to do help you know if you could get online it would be more valuable and you have to drive a, a 10 miles to, to 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 access things and i think you know we're we're here for the long term um we're in this little um you know it has been it's, not, it's a fair size airbnb that we'll be will be moved into because our house is no longer it was a fine house and we hope it can become a rust re retreat or something. Uh, and then FEMA will look at the, you know, the, the, if you've looked at my Instagram, I, I spend a lot of time on the shores of the, the riparian area of the Swannanoa river. And that's completely transformed. And if you look across there, there are cars in it now, and there are trailers from somewhere there. We have a white car that's on our farm that no one knows whose it is uh, wow. came from somewhere. We have 11 sheep. We've seen one of them in a the distance. We have, a, we haven't seen our pig. We think our pig may be, uh, we don't know where our pig is. You know, there, there are, are, you know, there's still a few hundred people that are out there uh, and, and people are being really innovative. You know, it, it's like uh, with uh, COVID mutual aid it came alive, uh, but people are realizing that you know, I think, you know, we need to build the infrastructure that works for the next time this happens. And I think these micro hubs are key. Uh, you know, there's, there's solar inverters and you know, they, they're, they're lights and charging uh, when you don't have it. And I think Starlink is, is uh, works when nothing else works. And so we've had some folks were there with that. And uh, it's, uh, it's, you know, it, I've been super active on that uh, um, raising funds. You know, I think we're, let's see where we are. I haven't been able to be online. Uh, 13 we were at, on me. Yeah, we're at 13,600, the, the Rebuilding Lives and Connections. Uh, so if you want to help us for the next time, you, you can send water and, you know, uh, diapers. Uh, but if you want to help us for the next time, help us build out a network of microgrid hubs. And it's led by a really great woman I worked with on uh, broadband access here. Broadband is really hard here because of the, the rock. Uh, you know, so you can uh, dig fiber at $20,000, you know, in the Louisiana Delta, and you can dig fiber at uh, 60000 here uh, because of the rock. And so... Our, we are incredibly biodiverse because of the hollows that allow us to do a lot more speciation. Like there is 12 kinds of a snail darter that there's only two kinds in Alabama because they had an inland sea and they didn't have the Appalachians stopping the, uh, the glaciers. So that means that there's only one route in to lots of places. And when it gets there, it, it's more flooded and the roads are, are hurt worse. And so, you know, access to all those folks up in the hollers that make us the most biodiverse, that we are the greatest source of, of uh, uh, biomedicinals uh, in, in this country and maybe more than the Yucatan. There's, uh, those folks fight about it. Oh. Um, and but that also means that we're more uh, susceptible when uh, there might be two more degrees of water uh, or, or temperature that it allows to be made 14 percent more water that and so it goes up further. That's crazy. So I think you know it's you know and, and working on this GoFundMe has helped me not think about what I've lost. You know I'm uh, folks are in my office now throwing away things on the bottom shelf because we, we had three feet of water in the house and we've scraped it out. My office is the last one and I brought books. And so, you know, there's, I will have much more time because, you know, I have to drive to the internet. We're supposed to have power tomorrow. Uh, I'm not sure we're next to a substation and, uh, but some of the substation generators were moved off their base by, the water it's it's more devastation than you know i've 
done hurricane coverage when I was on the Missis- in, in Mississippi as a reporter. This is far, and and that was like down on the coast. This is uh, 200 miles, 300 miles up upstream, and it's worse. And we will have more bad storms, uh, be, and the and the storms will carry more water and more heat that will make it carry further. So, this is you know figuring out what works when the power doesn't work, when the infrastructure doesn't work. Is if any gr- group wants to look at this, uh, things similar to microgrid hubs, uh, I'd love to. To in, any OGM group wants to do that, I. I'm, you know, I, 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 I know where to drive 10 miles to get online. <laughs> so that's what I do. So there's more, it's, it's, it's harder and worse helping people who want to help not be get in the way is really hard because they, they come with a big heart and they don't know who to talk to and they don't know where the people of the shut-ins are. And so, you know, talk to the folks who are there about the people they can't reach. Um, so you know, this is a place people come for the aging medicine, which used to be great before HCA uh, gutted our hospital. Uh, and, you know, people moved wow. here for the hospital, but HCA, uh, you know, our attorney general is trying to, to block that purchase finally or go back on it. Uh, the hospital, like last, the start of this year, they had eight neurosurgeons or, or neurologists. Now they have one because they treat people so badly. The hospitalists, uh, they were told to only work part half days and then wait at home if they could be called on and they couldn't leave and go anywhere. So all the hospitalists left. So it's a, it's a real profit center for HCA. Uh, and we're trying to, but it's, you know, we're, uh, so more old sick people move here and there's less for old sick people who move here than there was three or four years ago. So it's a really interesting, if people want to, I really think we need to work on infrastructure for when the, the, the when the when the existing infrastructure won't come back for a month or more. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's how that goes. Um, damn, Kevin, damn, that's amazing. It, it is amazing, and you know, I mean, I'm going to be. Uh, there's a new climate uh, guy with a master's at Warren Wilson, and I'm I'm going to propose to him that we we work on. You know, I wanted to say, is it re- is it regeneration? No, it's just resilience, being ready for these shocks and finding the infrastructure that works when these shocks. Dave Witzel, this might be an area you might find interesting. Uh, we're hoping to meet up next week. I was about to start uh, a um, paying interns at Warren Wilson to do nature based uh uh startups from it's a work college with 10,000 acres of uh forest and food forest <clears throat> and uh, they you know and you work in, in cattle or or uh, you know uh weaving or crafts or the biomedicinals uh, 15 hours and you get a reduction in your uh tuition we're looking to do philanthropic investing in them we're about to hire two interns, one to figure that out and one to figure out a currency that would value the things that that are, are non-cash that are in that economy. And, uh, you know, we were going to meet up, uh, you know, we, we met up on Tuesday and agreed on it. And we were going to meet up this week. And now, you know, the, the college is at least two weeks away. So I think we're we're positioned to do well without infrastructure here if we can figure out that we need to build things for the new reality where, where the, the 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 things you rely on won't come back what can you do um and i think a, a currency will fit i'm working with if you know, guys know michael linton he's some of these calls but also yeah. some other folks uh elaine uh, sure just two, two other currency experts to figure that part out and um yeah, all that stuff. We were also going to do. I just, I'm going to finish in a minute. I, you know, I discovered that uh, the first massacre uh, of the Cherokee uh, was launched from our land. We bought it from a family that had owned this land for 285 years. So I'm the the first. I'm actually the second family to own this land because the Cherokee didn't own land. They thought you can't own land. What what the hell does that mean? Uh, <clears throat> but you know, then they would send in surveyors and deeds, and then. Uh, soldiers to defend private property rights that hadn't existed and shoot people. 
uh, and you know, uh, Trail of Tears started from there. But uh, so we, we're going to. Uh, I'm working with the Cherokee Two Spirit Guy to do a, a, the first memorial to that massacre that is not really widely known, uh, and uh, it's also a place that is the only undefiled access to a village that it, they've had for five thousand years. They did uh, archaeology over at the college and the village across the river, you know, thirty yards and. They, you know, they, when they've dug up their graves, they think it's defiled. So we, the Cherokee will be working with us to tend the river cane and they use their river cane can do these double weave baskets and can hold water and sell for $2,000. So I've got a, two assets that the Cherokee who don't like working with uh, white folks will be really involved in. You have to give them what's called free and unfettered access, which means they don't have to, here's where you can park and you don't have to talk to any white people. <clears throat> but we were going to do a memorial because one final thing on this, uh, this was, uh, the massacre was done by uh, uh, Scots who came here, uh, who were subject to the Highland clearances. And I, BJ and I went to a, a restored commons village on the west coast of uh, uh, Scotland. There were a thousand of those villages where there was no cash. And they would have like the village bowl and then you would have the two acres of good land and you would give it up every year. But then people started working for the clearances who would come in and do you know, what they did here, which is uh, send a surveyor, make it a deed and, and evict people uh, and, um, and then send troops around and defending private property. But they learned surveying. And so they learned to think like commodities about land rather than sharing land. And so we, even in, in Scotland, when some of those folks were making some money from surveying and, and, the, and the, the, uh, the colonization of Western Scotland, uh, they would no longer give up the good acre. And so all the thousand acre, uh, the thousand commons villages in Western Scotland went away because the cash economy doesn't work with a commons village where there's, you give up the land in turn rather than I have a, a fence around the land uh, because I'm also making other money. And so thinking like a, the land is a commodity we're also relates to uh, the rights of nature where we're in relationship with this place <clears throat> and so you know the Cherokee word for river is the old man and the old man just destroyed our ability to sell this land that we've discovered its tragic history in and that they will be with us to memorialize that tragedy and so we don't know what that means but you know, in terms of liquid assets, we can't make money from it. We can make money by having people come there, uh, but it, it 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 no longer becomes a liquid asset. You know, it, we we cannot commoditize this land where the massacre started. So that's that's my story so far. Um, thank you for joining us. Thank you for telling us all of that. Um, I'm afraid I've got to close the call down. Uh, sorry, my, my apologies to Rick and Mark who have had their hands up, but I we need to actually close this down. Um, but I will take this piece of the call, if you're up for it, and uh, post it to YouTube for you uh, in case yeah. you'd like to share it with anybody. <clears throat> that would be great. Thank you. If you can just do that piece of it, uh, you know, because people don't realize. And I, I think, you know, fine, send us bottled water and diapers you know and feminine hygiene stuff but help us build the infrastructure that works when the power doesn't work sounds great um i will i will do that and um it's hard to imagine everything that you all have gone through and are still have ahead dave i'd love to talk to you about what a a, a couple sessions maybe in your slack space would be about uh in this space uh just yeah, telling well, the story, I think, would be huge, right? I don't think people really have a, you know, a visceral understanding of what it's like to be there. We don't either. It. It's like, you know, how do you feel? People asking, it's like, you know, I got too much shit to do, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. You know, what about wellness? You know, I'm sorry, we... Uh, we just got a generator yesterday. We can we can put food in that won't, you know, we, we brought six rotisserie chickens back from Johnson City and I have the group meet with them. And so anyway, yeah, I'd love to tell the story, but, I, you know, what else is equivalent to a microgrid um, hub in a community center? You know, what else will be infrastructure that works when you can't rely on public sector infrastructure on the that, grid. 
I got to go back and help clean out shit now. I, I, I said, look, I need to go just like tell the folks on the, you know, the Jerry and his call. <clears throat> and then, uh, then I'm, I'm back to hauling shit uh, you know, the rest well, of the day. Kevin, thank you for doing that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Guys. I, you know, All right. Kevin, well, yeah. Let me, let me know it, when you're, you know, gotten enough stability to try to do something the next step in. You know, cool. yeah, I will, Dave. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thanks, all. Thanks very much. Thanks, Jake.